and welcome to Nutrition Therapy by Lucy. This is a channel where we talk about food, good nutrition, and health. Thank you for your support, for always watching my videos, leaving a comment, giving them a like, even for consuming my content. I am so grateful. But if you're here for the first time, please make sure you hit on that subscribe button, the red button. For the new subscribers, Karibu Sana, feel welcome. Here we talk all matters nutrition and health to make sure that we live or we have a healthy lifestyle. So today we are talking about Mata's pregnancy. I have a guest, Sarah, Sarah Nyakea. She'll be taking us through her pregnancy journey. Sarah, Karibu Sana, kindly introduce yourself to the audience. Who is Sarah even before we go to the journey? <laughs> <laughs> so hi guys, welcome to Lucy's channel. My name is Sarah Nyakeo. I am a communication and advocacy officer. I'm a storyteller. I'm a writer and recently a mother to an adorable girl um, called Amari. Wow. Karibu sana. Asante. Maskia ni officer. I do get interrupted. And also you can get interrupted on the comment section. Maybe if you are a mother, if you are pregnant, you can share your story on the comment section. So Sarah, mm. let's go direct to the pregnancy. How was it? Like everything now everything about the pregnancy how was it uh i like to say my pregnancy was very easy mm -hmm. and uh, apart from some few difficulties here and there that has mm -hmm. so i discovered i was pregnant in uh, september 2020 of course it was at the height of the pandemic nobody knew exactly what was going on and it was an easy, it was a very confusing year. Then, oops, you're pregnant. So, I think with a, there's that meme where people say, at the, how, uh, when you ask a question, I think I'm pregnant. And you ask, at the, what are the symptoms of getting pregnant? That is one of them. <laughs> that thinking. <laughs> yeah, that thinking is one of the symptoms of pregnancy. So, I, of course, every person who has an unplanned pregnancy, has that phase where you you think you're pregnant, but you're hoping you're not pregnant. So uh, in my circle of work, the, when the year is coming to an end, we are usually very busy because we are trying to catch up on our budgets and finish with activities as the year comes to an end. So when I, I, I started thinking I was pregnant in September 2020, but in my head, I was like, ah, hopefully I'm not. So I, I ignored the feeling and I said, ah, I won't test. Let's just wait for the periods. But if they don't come, then I need to go and test. And since it was a busy time for the area of work I do, I was so swamped with work. So the pregnancy part did not catch me so much because I was traveling. I was out of Nairobi most of the time. So in October, I decided to test and Oops. true to my thoughts, <laughs> <laughs> pregnancy, I was told it's positive. So it was of course a confusing time because the pandemic, work was crazy. And now I need to think about a pregnancy, something that was unplanned. Uh, so after, Discovering I was pregnant, I was just like, okay, cool. I, of course, I started Googling like every other millennial. Uh, when should you start your clinics? Mm -hmm. uh, what do I need to know about pregnancy? Yeah, so I started going for my antenatal clinic when I was like two months. Mm -hmm. And when I was, I was also every, I think every new mom struggles to decide which hospital because of course you want the best but you're not sure what best means. So I, and of course your proximity to the hospital, ETC. So I went to the hospital that I usually go for my normal checkups when I'm sick. And that's where I started my antenatal journey. And uh, the pregnancy, the first, everybody says the first trimester is crazy, but mine was normal. It was just normal, the clinics were normal. So when I went for my third month clinic, uh, the, my gyna told me, oh, I see your cervix is not closing. And so let me cut you short. Yeah. 
was this in the first trimester or during your second trimester? That was my first trimester. Mm -hmm. So it was around the third month. So the third month was uh, October. Mm -hmm. So October when I went for my normal clinic and my, I think at around three months that we, that is when we have that, it's called the first scan. Mm -hmm. So when I went for my first scan and I took it back to the doctor, the doctor told me, ah, your cervix is not closing. Mm -hmm. So she she looked at the scan and explained to me that i had a condition called a cervical incompetence mm -hmm. so a cervical incompetence is when your cervix does not close and for it not closing can cause a miscarriage so the doctor told me that i need to have a mcdonald stitch so a mcdonald stitch is a stitch that it's like an artificial closing of the cervix so it's a, a, f a few it's less than an hour's uh, procedure in the theater but nobody had ever told me about anything of the sort mm -hmm. and uh, when i went to the doctor she asked me a question like do you think do you in your family do you experience miscarriages has your mother ever told you she had a miscarriage? And I told her, no, I've not had anybody have a miscarriage. Mm -hmm. So I was a first of its of my kind. So I didn't have anybody even to ask because I've never heard about the condition. And when I went after this, the visit, when I went home and Googled about cervical incompetence, they, it was just this, the old, they just explained to me what the doctor had explained to me. Mm -hmm. And there was only just one other story about the condition mm -hmm. about a woman who had lost three pregnancies and they later discovered that she had a cervical incompetence and she was able to get her the fourth pregnancy was successful mm -hmm. so of course it was at the height of the pandemic mm -hmm. so the doctor told me after to, you should get the the mcdonald's stitch at around 20 to 22 weeks so and I went in for my McDonald's stitch. The doctor, the of the sorry, the hospital I go to, they had suggested I go early in the morning, so that I get the McDonald's stitch and they are able to observe me for the whole day. Then I go home because it was just a day case. Okay, so I get to the hospital. I was a bit scared. So of course anything you hear procedure vehicle, yeah scared, yeah it yeah. makes me scared and i was like what i've had two other operations in my life so i was like oh my god i'm going under again because of a pregnancy and i remember when i was having this discussion with my friend i ha i think I, I i in my circle of friends we talk about pregnancy and reproductive yeah. issues a lot because we've come to discover that it's not easy like getting pregnant is not easy the pregnancy journey is not easy and i was oh i'm going under again because of of uh pregnancy and i was like what i hope that goes on well so when i went to the hospital so they tell me oh because it's a theater procedure you need to get a COVID test so it was at the height of the COVID 19 when even the COVID test was very expensive and scary and scary like yeah. It was 10,000 shillings, then you're not even sure whether it's going to be positive or negative. And so when I went to the morning, I was so confused. And then I said, ah, I think I need some time before I, get, I decide whether I'm getting the COVID test and how that goes. So I went home, thought about it. And the doctor kept on insisting that if you, the longer you take before you get the McDonald's stitch, the more you put your child at risk of a miscarriage so i went home and then after two days i decided oh i think it's time so i got the covid test it was negative so i went for the mcdonald's stitch something i never knew existed so a problem that i never knew existed so it was true to it it was a very short procedure it took less than 45 minutes and i was out no pain so it's a painless procedure yeah it's a painless procedure mm -hmm. no pain uh, of course because i was so confused i at the few hours after i got the stitch 
ah i didn't even want to pee because i was like ah maybe that's a wound and the urine may induce it because of the saltiness of the urine so yeah, in a few hours i was no i'm not peeing you're just holding i'm it. just holding it because i'm not sure what is going to happen and i was like hey the doctor didn't say anything is going to happen so yeah so it was very painless so i had it through the whole pregnancy so after i got the mcdonald's stitch at 21 weeks i had it through the whole pregnancy and every time i went for my clinics uh, they looked and it, it was well closed yeah so i wouldn't say i had any issues after the stitch was installed so i didn't have any issues but for my pregnancy i think the that trimester was the toughest and i think before you get pregnant you hear people saying oh the that trimester is the ghetto and you don't understand so in my that trimester i started having gestational pressure no fast <laughs> <laughs> well, it comes to matters pregnancy. Yeah. You can talk on a story, yeah, okay. Of course. When others are struggling with the first trimester, yeah. others they are, you just want to pop this yeah, yeah, baby yeah, out. Yeah. So you've talked about you started let me take you back. You started okay. doing your ultrasound yeah. early in the first trimester. Yeah. And guys we talked about this. Remember if we had a specialist, we talked on importance of doing your first ultrasound during your first trimester very important you can be able to diagnose some of these conditions then it's never quite preventable yeah like in in her case come on kenna for that ultrasound mm. maybe to miscarriage get happen mm. so if you are pregnant there you just tested positive for the pregnancy this is the right time to start your antenatal clinic yeah. and the doctor your guy now will advise you when to do your first ultrasound mm. very important mm. for the health of your baby and also for your safety so ultrasound and we talked about this very safe see x-ray no radiations it's very safe for the mother and for the child yeah. so if you are pregnant there you go one month pregnant one week start your antenatal clinic and come to uh, it's never too late if you are on your second trimester never started your antenatal clinic this is the right time to start and to have all those your ultrasound your tetanus vaccine this is the right time to start so we got to the second trimester my dad the second was there was nothing it was just no so, pregnancy the uh, growth to really queen happen growth growth, growth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh, during my third trimester mm-hmm. when i was I, at seven months mm-hmm. I started having gestational pressure. Mm-hmm. So it was just a normal day and I left the house. So where I live, I have those the footbridge. So I was just talking on the footbridge and then all of a sudden I felt a weakness and uh I couldn't see. It was crazy. I couldn't see, I couldn't walk. Eh, I have never been scared like that day. Eh, it was what? So I couldn't see. So luckily I had my friend with me and we immediately dashed off to the emergency where they discovered that my pressure was low, low, low. And I've never had I've never had low pressure in my life, no high pressure. So I've never had a pressure issue. So the doctor diagnosed me with gestational pressure which is a common thing but he also said that it was not common for the pressure to go down yeah. it was more common for the pressure to go up so he he told me to of course drink a lot of water stay hydrated all the time and gave me some, a few medicine just to deal with the situation yeah so Another thing I forgot to say, I don't know whether it's only me but the supplements we are given for the pregnancy they took a toll on me. I don't know whether it was because of the iron. Eh, hey, they were crazy. And of course the doctor insists that you need to take this yeah. because of yourself and the baby. But for me the the antenatal supplements were crazy, very crazy. And of course you have to take them for the nine months yeah so 
yeah so after the that trimester the gestational pressure it was well dealt with so i had a few episodes here and there but nothing very serious that i would say was hard for me so that trimester came gestational pressure it was okay i i wouldn't i wouldn't complain maybe because i was saying ah it's not that crazy i know people who have gone through more crazy things actually with the high pressure yeah so your case it was low yeah it was low okay. and of course it has such episodes of uh, weakness mm-hmm. sometimes they i have the what is it called nausea kizunguzungu but when i stop and just breathe and drink water it goes yeah so uh, so my due date is here the baby is not coming <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like eh hey, that trust stuff somebody is tired and that that is something now yeah so the due date is here and the baby is not coming and I I don't know whether it's everybody but eh hey, that trimester you're tired for me I worked even on my last day I would say it was on my last day because I my baby came on June 2nd of course June 1st was a holiday but on that Monday I was at work wow. yeah so I worked even my last day and I was extremely tired <laughs> so I think every pregnant person will always ask their mother about these things so and my mom says told me that her for her all her pregnancy come on the due date mm-hmm. so my mom is not even I don't know that it's our parents or or it's our generation that we are having our babies at 40 weeks because my mom was he said that he's never she's never heard about 40 weeks she's never heard about think, 40 weeks i think maybe for for our parents yeah, yeah. it's about months yeah I'm eight months yeah. I'm nine months but it's never that nine weeks pregnant yeah. maybe they got to the the 40th week, and they didn't, they didn't know <laughs> yeah. yeah because i always it was always i what do you mean 40 weeks and the doctor is telling you you're okay so even she she even started giving me pressure because i from the word go i wanted to push mm-hmm. and i was going to push that baby and my mom was telling me hey 40 weeks i ah, know you need to go for a cs no you need to go for a cs mm-hmm. so when i got to so my baby came when i was 40 weeks three days oh. yeah so 40 weeks three days and uh, it was just normal. I think when you also when you're nearing the due date, you feel something that you feel like the baby is coming. So I think for me for that day it was just a normal day. And my gainer had told me, oh, you're already past 40 weeks. So just make sure you walk, 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 so that the baby can come. So that day I left my house. So it was Madaraka day. So I was not going to work. So I said, ah, let me go and walk and see whether this baby is going to come. And I walked, I walked. So on my, during just the walk, I, I felt, hey, something is happening. Something is happening and this is not normal. So I went back home and at around 8 p.m., I started feeling now that there was something like the contraction was coming but uh, it was not so much so I decided to because uh, at the moment at, at that particular moment I used to live alone and I am those people who like to plan I am a huge planner so I decided to clean the house wash the utensils I just said ah, let me make the house clean so that when I leave I when I come back, I'll find the house as clean as I left it. And I think this thing happens to any mom. Mtoto wa Kikaribia. The general cleaning that. Uko na mopa chini ya kitanda. Dilish. I think there, it is something, even it, I think it is psychological preparation. You just yeah. want to to bring this baby. As you know, I think it is happening. When you talk to most mothers, yeah. they have a similar story. Yeah. yeah. That you, maybe one week to delivery yeah. i clean you yeah. wash everything i think it's something that happens to every man yeah, yeah because i told me i had like a whole plan of how i'll take the carpets the dry cleaners <laughs> all my duvets yeah so i think it's a thing yeah yeah so at around so i did the cleaning then i showered then now i called my friend i told her hey, 
I think this baby is coming. Mm-hmm. This baby is coming. So at around 10, and my friend came. Then we went to hospital. I checked in. And uh, when I got to the hospital there, doctor said I was four inches open. Mm. And there was no pain. There was nothing. So when I got to the ward, labor ward, the other ghetto, I the, the pain went away. So I slept, woke up the next morning. When the doctor came, he's, she said I was five. So she said, oh, because we can, it seems like your opening is taking too long, that let us induce you. What? That was... I think mothers, you know what it, hot induction is. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't relate, let me get to know the comment section. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so the doctor said, ah, you just, we'll just induce you so that the process goes faster. So the, I was induced and... Uh, uh, when the pain started kicking in, I was at seven. Eh, and I've never felt what I felt that time. Eh, what? I still dread that day. Yeah, so, of course, I had promised myself I'm pushing the baby. And if if nothing changed, I was going to push the baby. So, seven, eight, eh, at around eight, it stalled. And the pain was too much. It was, hey, uh-uh. even the thought of it, even now, it makes me cringe. <laughs> so at eight, nine, ten, so I had labor for like six hours because I was induced at around midday, and I the baby came at around seven seven p.m. So and the baby came at seven. On second June, twenty twenty one, the bundles of joy arrived. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How was that ex- the experience? I think what I always even tell my friends, like everybody tells you, "How was the pushing?" And I always tell them, "No, the pushing is not the story. You leave the pushing. <laughs> the pushing is like two minutes. Yeah. You do one, two, three, and the baby and comes the baby out. comes out." So for me, the experience for the labor pain, no, no. I don't I even tell my friends I feel I'm not sure but I feel like if I get another baby I might go through this yes because eh, that was eh, that was a lot of pain yeah but the pushing was like three minutes two minutes you're done with that yeah. story and I think of course uh, the important thing is that your baby comes but yeah. I felt like pushing was it was, the good thing about the pushing is that you just come out because as soon as I pushed my baby, of course the nurses will wheel you to the bed, yeah. but I felt okay because even the next day I was normal, I was walking mm-hmm. around, I was I was okay, I was okay, I was just so tired, but everything else was okay. Yeah, so I think the exp- the labor is is bad, but the pushing is okay and. You, you just go back to your normal self. That is what I think I loved about the pushing. Yeah, and like I think because I, of the pain and how the induction was so painful, I had not eaten the, the whole day. So the baby came out when she was very hungry. <laughs> so immediately she was out, she was sucking on her fingers. And at least I was lucky that when I just gave birth, my milk came. So I didn't have an issue with giving the baby the milk at that particular time. So for me, what I, I one of the experiences now that I felt could have been worked on when I was pregnant mm-hmm. is because uh, a few years ago, like five years ago, I had a surgery on my right boob. Mm-hmm. I had a, a, a fibrodynema, it's called a fibrodynema. Mm-hmm. So my right boob does not produce milk mm-hmm. and I felt like the doctors or my gyna did not take note of that when I was pregnant yeah. to prepare me to for the feeding of my child. Yeah. So of course I am done with the hospital, I've gone home. Of course when you give birth immediately you feel like you have milk. Yeah. But in like three weeks after giving birth I, I discovered eh, no like even myself, even, I remember even my friend telling me, I, why do you always give your baby the left boob? Mm-hmm. And it was very unconscious. I didn't notice it, but 
of course maybe i noticed it unconsciously because every time i gave her the right boob i felt like she didn't want because it was not producing any milk and then now this person discovered and like hey why do you always give her the left boob oh that's when i discovered oh my right boob does not produce any milk or even if it produces it's just a uh, very little very little so in three weeks i was on to formula and then i also felt that the doctors do, do not prepare you to in terms of or rather there is no information you know nowadays it's not like the past where the formula brand was one mm-hmm. now there are so many of yeah, them true. and nobody tells you this has this this is the best this is not the best so like every mother i just used my instincts to give the baby the formula that i chose for myself and uh, since then she has been on formula and she just be- breastfeeds like twice a day uh, mostly at night because in general i didn't i i don't have enough milk to sustain her yeah yeah we talked about preparation mm. and maybe after giving birth mm. maybe did any health worker approach you to how to, to attach the baby for a breast mm. because I, this is something that most of the health workers ignore mm. nobody is showing you how even to attach that baby to the to the breast and mm. that's why you find there are so many breast complications so nipples it goes to engorgement, mastitis, you get the incident, which are very painful. I think this is something that should be taken into action. After giving birth, if you are a health worker watching this, after mama mejifungua, don't assume they know how to breastfeed. Because breastfeeding mm. is, what when you want to assume, it is a natural thing. Yes, it is, but it is a land. It is a land. Let me mm. say it is a land behavior for both the mother mm-hmm. and the Baby, child. So I'm not at a mtoto yeah. sometimes. Hajui kunyonya. Unakaeka kana ya. Wow. And also for the mother it can be very discouraging. You want yeah. to breastfeed but you don't know how to attach that baby. Yeah. Yeah. So for our hospitals, both the public, the private, we have good workers but just do that work. Show that mother how to attach the baby to make breastfeed breastfeeding should not be difficult actually a mother should be enjoying how to breast should be enjoying breastfeeding so show that mother how to attach and demonstrate to make breastfeeding is an enjoyable uh, for me the nurses uh, taught me how to hold the baby and how to allow the baby latch so that i wouldn't complain mm-hmm. They taught us, but of course, what I said, what I said before, mm-hmm. they didn't prepare me for, like you, you might not have enough milk mm-hmm. because you had this procedure on your boob and you might not have breast milk. Mm-hmm. So if you don't have breast milk, this is the formula that we advise mothers to use to sustain their children. So. Yeah, I think that was one of the loopholes I would say they missed. And maybe in my next pregnancy, God willing, uh, maybe that is something that I will look up. Yeah, but I think for me, what I would like to insist on this channel is that if, for example, for me, I felt my gainer did a good job with uh, noticing my condition, the cervical incompetence earlier before anything bad could have happened. Sure. Because I think when I later on, when I went to look for stories of similar cases, I only found that one mother mm-hmm. who I also felt painful because she had lost three pregnancies before actually the doctors discovered this problem and if it's a problem that can be solved why go through this pain of losing a child losing three kids because your doctors did not look into your condition well enough so i think that is one of the some of some one of the things that i will insist on if you feel like there's a problem and you feel like this guy is not doing you justice. Always look for other, a second opinion, a third opinion, a fourth opinion, because it's very painful to lose a child. 
and no mother would want that True. yeah so let's you can learn from me and use that and also inform other people that's why such a channel is here to educate us mothers on what we should and what we should not do in regards to sustaining our the fruits of our womb yeah yeah so that has been the Sarah story the pregnancy story one thing I have learned about pregnancy if one symptom of pregnancy is you are thinking you're pregnant you're already <laughs> pregnant so go take a test if it, it returns positive start your antenatal clinics as soon as possible and also you have learned about the ultrasound it is you can be able to detect to detect or diagnose most of the conditions that can be prevented to, to make sure that you have your baby healthy and also you yourself you're healthy so that is the sarah story you can let me get to know your story on the comment section and also if you would like to share your story on this channel you can also you can comment and let me get to know so make sure you share this story like comment and turn on the notification bell so that anytime we upload a new video story health talk you'll be to me among the first people to get notified. Bye bye and subscribe.